This morning on Wake Up With Hope, we will have a musical performance by Gisela Kroll, an inspiring message from John Bradshaw, and a delicious recipe from Live It in the Kitchen. Plus, the parenting place is back with more useful parenting tips. Stay with us. Good morning and welcome to another brand new hope-filled episode of Wake Up With Hope. Amen. We are officially well into the summer season in Song of Solomon, chapter 2, verse 11 and 12. We find these beautiful words, for lo, the winter is past, the rain is gone and over, the flowers appear on the earth, the time of singing of birds is come, and the voice of the turtle is heard in our land. What a lovely picture of the freshness of the earth that we get to experience during this summer season. What does summer look like where you are? I can tell you that in our yard, we have lots of flowers, and I am enjoying them so much. We would love to see a picture of your flowers. Feel free to share with us on our official Hope Channel Facebook page. That would be great. You know, we hope that our program today will be a blessing for you. We're going to have music by Gisela Kroll, an inspiring message from John Bradshaw, and Living in the Kitchen is back. We're also going to hear from the Parenting Place on learning how to appreciate the different personalities in our family. You know, that's going to be insightful for us as well. Yes, With the 14 and 12 year old, uh, it's quite a dynamic in our home. <laughs> but before we go there, let's take a look at this day in history. On July 6, 1957, Althea Gibson claimed the women's singles tennis title at Wimbledon and became the first African American to win a championship at London's All England Lawn Tennis and Croquet Club. Gibson began playing tennis in high school at a time when tennis was largely segregated. However, four-time U.S. Nationals winner Alice Marble advocated on Gibson's behalf and she was invited to make her United States National Championships, now known as the U.S. Open, debut in 1950. Her career took off shortly after that. Hmm. You know, what a difference it made for Althea to have an advocate. It makes a difference for us too. Jesus is known as our advocate, our high priest in heaven. Did you know that in Hebrews chapter 7, verse 25, it says that he is also able to save to the utmost those who come to God through him, since he always lives to make intercession for them. What beautiful hope. You know, what a comforting picture Amen. that even when Satan tries to accuse us of failing time and time again, when he accuses us of not being good enough to be saved, Jesus makes intercession for us. And he stands before God the Father and he says, this is my child. And they have given their hearts over to me and have repented. Then friends, he shows those nailed, pierced hands. And you and I stand justified before heaven. And because of Jesus Christ, our advocate, we have a right to the heavenly kingdom as we allow him to be the Lord of our lives. You know, what a thought for, you know, deep reflection and contemplation. Amen. Definitely. Summer is not summer without some good chili. Mm. Isn't that right? Well, this morning, Loma Linda's very own Chef Corey brings us a hearty chili recipe perfect for a cool summer evening. All right. Before we get started making chili, let's steam some carrots and bell peppers. Now trust me, we are making chili and we'll come back to this step in just a minute. Okay, let's get started on the chili. After you saute the onion, add the dry spices and cook them just until they're fragrant. This will help to enhance their flavor. This chunky chili will fool and satisfy even the biggest meat eaters. Okay, back to the steamed veggies. Blend them with just enough water to get them smooth. Once you've added the puree back to the chili, you can't even tell the veggies are in there. So if you have picky eaters or don't like veggies yourself, this is the chili for you. 
and for some extra fiber, flax meal will only thicken. It won't change the taste. There you go. A thick, chunky, veggie-packed, hearty chili. We all live with several different personalities, both at home and in our workplaces. And it's an interesting activity to step back and think about the personalities that you have in your home, in your own family. You know, sometimes they might actually affect the way you interact with each other. The parenting place has more. Okay, guys, I've got the printouts for your personality tests. Oh, good, is that mine? Look, I'm sorry. It says you don't actually have a personality. <laughs> Give me that. Where is it? No, it doesn't. It says I'm details focused, serious, structured, and methodical. Yeah, like I said, no personality. He's got plenty of personality. He's just a little quieter than others. You know what? I wish you were a bit quieter. Jabber, jabber, jabber all the time. Let me see that stupid test. <laughs> Oh, well, they got that right. It says here, I'm the boss and I should control the rest of you because my ideas are the best ideas. <laughs> Does not. Hang on, guys. Peace. Let's have a look at this. Okay. Hmm. Firm, enterprising, competitive, a problem solver. It doesn't actually say that you should be the boss. That's what it means though. <laughs> Confident, goal-driven, decision-maker, perfect boss characteristics. <laughs> yeah, characteristics for a dictator and a bully. Guys, settle down. Now, playful, what did you say? Well, no surprises there. Apparently I'm brilliant. Let's have a look. Enthusiastic, takes risks, visionary, that's you. Motivator, energetic, very verbal. That's you. Creative, fun-loving. Loudmouth, goofball, and a show-off that is basically unemployable. <laughs> and that's why I love working in this office. Because of our high productivity, efficiency, and excellent IT support? No, it's because of the wonderful bouquet of characters I get to work with you, with all your precision and the way you like to know things. But he's always just so slow. He's always preparing, starting, then restarting. Stop, I just like to know that things are done properly. And you, with all your fun, you really brighten up the place. You brighten up the place, sir, uh, when you leave. It's not just that. The ideas you have, you're just brilliant. You keep this place going. <laughs> really? This guy? <laughs> he has a 10 second brain flash followed by a two hour lunch. Now, if I didn't actually get things done around here, oh. and yes, you're great at getting the practical side sorted and getting this place working. See, I'm just amazed at how different we are, but it works. Look, just make sure you don't quit or we'll probably kill each other. Okay, guys. Who's down for 10 minutes of mindfulness? A, A. Now friends, if you're enjoying today's program, do us a favor, share the love, share with a friend, or visit our website at hopetv.org slash wake up to see more. After the break, we'll have music from Gisela Kroll and later John Bradshaw from It Is Written will be sharing a very powerful devotional thought. Welcome back to Wake Up With Hope. You know, they say that help comes to those who help themselves. But come to think of it, Jesus never said we had to do this by ourselves. That's and it. this is a precious line from the upcoming song by Gisela Kroll titled, From Where I'm Standing. Enjoy. It's amazing how you never run out of patience. The God I thought I knew was all about the expectations. I'm learning how to love you.
Amen. What a great song. Yes. Wow. You know, the beautiful thing is that Jesus has promised that we don't have to do this by ourselves. Amen. Thank you, Gisela, for that beautiful reminder through song. Amen. And if you're enjoying today's program, like we are, we're so happy to be here with you, please share it with your friends. Our website is hopetv.org slash wake up. Now we will take a short break, but when we come back, Pastor John Bradshaw from It Is Written will share an eye-opening message from the Bible with us. Welcome back to our morning program. We're so glad you're here with us. You know, sometimes I ask my kids a question when they go to bed at night. I say, what was your favorite part of the day? Well, right now I'm asking you a question. What has been your favorite part of our program so far? We would love to hear about it. Send us a message on Facebook and let us know. Yes, please do. You know, this morning, John Bradshaw from It Is Written is with us to share an inspiring message. Hey, great to see you. I hope you're doing well today, blessed and encouraged in the Lord. My name is John Bradshaw from It Is Written. It's really a joy to have this time from you. You know, somebody once famously coined the phrase, space, the final frontier. Uh, you know, there's a lot of it out there. The universe is vast. I don't know if anyone has any real comprehension of just how big it is. But recently, NASA made an announcement that they have located now 5,000 exoplanets. Those are actual planets outside our solar system. Now, for the layperson, that seems almost impossible. But if you're in the know, you might understand how that process works. I'm not suggesting that the Hubble telescope or the James Webb telescope have been implicated or used for these things, but we have those telescopes floating around in the sky. We have stations here on the Earth. We have very highly trained, intelligent 
perspicacious scientists who are monitoring the skies and looking deep into space. And they found these planets outside of the Milky Way. That means they're a long, long, long way away. Some of them are bigger than the Earth. They call them super Earths. Some of them the size of Jupiter, some the size of Neptune. Now that's pretty big because if the Earth was the size of a nickel, Neptune would be in comparison the size of a baseball. Pretty big Neptune, big place. And they found planets, exoplanets, outside our solar system that are that size. I mean, how big is the solar system? So, uh, sorry, the universe. 5,000 of these things. But what one scientist said recently, she said, they believe there are 200 billion exoplanets that we haven't yet found. I mean, you need to try to get your mind around that, but I, I, I just don't know if you can. So exoplanets, big planets, most of them outside our solar system, found 5,000, but there's just this almost countless number besides that are to be found. The first time I ever heard that there are millions of galaxies, or was it billions? I don't want to exaggerate. Millions is an awful lot. I thought to myself, it's a very big universe we have. Very, very big. The Milky Way is about 100,000 light years across, which means that if at creation, Adam had started traveling at the speed of light, he would be barely 1 20th of the way across the galaxy. It's just vast, so, so big. But what does that tell you about God who made this all? The challenge that many people have is that their God is too small. Aunt Mabel is sick, you shrug your shoulders, what can anyone do? Hold on a minute, did you go to God and wrestle with God and plead with God that Aunt Mabel would get well? Maybe you did and she didn't get well. In that case, we trust God. But maybe you didn't. Maybe you should have. Maybe you still should. What's your, what's your default reaction? Somebody loses a job. Oh, you lose a job. What's the default reaction? Complain about the boss. That might or might not be a, a valid response, but the default reaction needs to be to pray. It needs to be to pray, to look to God. You're threatened with eviction. What do you do? You say, well, wait a minute. My landlord really is God. I'm going to trust in God. I'll do what I can. I'll negotiate. I'll save. I'll do this. I'll do that. But my landlord is really God. They're downsizing at your company. Who is it who's ultimately in control? Who's taking care of you? That's God. Do you trust that God would take care of you? Hold on a minute. What do we say? Outside of the Milky Way, they've found 5,000 exoplanets. There again, there's 200 billion exoplanets out there. Some of them are gigantic. How big is your God? That's the question I want to ask you today. Is He able to provide for you? The Bible says, My God shall supply all your need according to His riches in glory by Christ Jesus. If you believe that, then you believe that and you will trust that God is able to provide for your need. A crushing blow comes into your life. It could be financial, could be social, could be marital, marital maybe. What do you do? Does it, does it, does it flatten you completely? Or do you say, no, wait a minute. Jesus said, lo, I am with you always, even to the end of the world. So in spite of this real difficulty that's going on in my life, I wanna trust that Jesus is with me. I wonder if I ever told you this. I might have. If I did, it's worth telling you again because it's certainly very relevant to what we're talking about here. I went to visit a lady one day. I was pastoring in a certain church and she was a church member. She contacted me and said, Pastor, come visit me. No, I'd visited her several times already. So this was interesting. She summoned me to her bedside at the residential care facility. I wondered what could be up. She said to me, Pastor, I've always tried to get cancer in a part of my body where I had two of something. She said, I lost a kidney. I lost a breast. I lost an eye. I wondered where she was going with this. She said, but you know, Pastor, I only have one liver. I said, you have liver cancer? She said, I do. I said, what are they telling you? She said, there isn't really any hope. 
I said, oh. Well, how are you doing? How are you going to be? You know what she said? She said to me, I figure that me and Jesus are going to get through this together. Now, she didn't say Jesus and I. That might have been more appropriate grammatically. But she said, I believe me and Jesus. So I'll never forget those words. I repeated those words at her funeral several months later. She was a character. I mean that in the most respectful way. She had a spark about her. I mean, anybody who would say to me what she said to me, you know, she's got some personality. And she did. I can never forget her faith. She was confronted by a terminal illness, which she knew was going to take her life. And she said, it's going to be okay. Because together with Jesus, I will get through this. No, it's not that she had greater faith than anybody necessarily. She didn't have access to something that you and I don't have access to. She just had a big God. She had the kind of God that made a universe. Put all those exoplanets out there, planets way outside our solar system. Put those millions of galaxies out there. Her God was the one who put the red spot on the side of Jupiter and wrapped the rings around Saturn. Her God was the one who could bring water out of a rock and carpet the ground with manna. Her God was the one who could bring down the walls of Jericho and open up the Red Sea. Her God was the one that stopped the river Jordan from flowing so that Elijah could cross over one way and come back the other. Her God was able to open the eyes of the blind and cause the lame to leap as an heart or a deer, you understand. Her God was the one who was able to raise the dead. And she knew that one day Jesus would come back and raise her from the dead. Exoplanets, you're never going to see one with the naked eye, at least not this side of the second coming of Jesus, but they can tell you something. They can tell you that the God of heaven is a great big God. He is big enough to help you through. He's big enough to help you with your challenges. He'll see you through your worries and He will provide every need. My prayer for you today is that you will discover that your God is a great big God. Pastor John, we want to thank you for those words of hope and encouragement this morning. Yo, thank you so much. That did my heart good. Now, friends, don't forget to visit our website at hopetv.org slash wake up to learn more about what is going on. And be sure to be back here tomorrow morning. We're going to have a special feature from The Parenting Place, music by Naomi Streamer, and a special mental health segment by Dr. Jennifer Jill Schwerzer. We can't wait to see you here. And if you enjoyed the program today, visit hope.study, and there you can find free Bible study guides that will help you begin or refresh your relationship with Jesus. And the website is so easy to memorize that you can share it with friends. It's hope.study. Check it out, you'll be blessed. And before we go, we have a Bible promise for you. Today's Bible promise is found in Psalms chapter 32, verse eight. The Lord says, I will guide you along the best pathway for your life. I will advise you and watch over you. I love that promise. I do too. And it's a faithful promise, friends. He will guide you. It doesn't say maybe, perhaps, I hope so. No, He will guide you and He will guide you along the best pathway for your life, friends. Just claim it. Amen. And I choose to claim that promise today. How about you? We hope you have a wonderful Wednesday and thank you for being with us this morning. Let's pray. Our Father in heaven, wow, Lord, with promises like this, we can't wait to just go and face this day with you. We know, Lord, that you have precious thoughts towards us. And as we continue to place our faith in you, all those precious thoughts will be fulfilled in our life today. So Lord, thank you for filling our hearts with hope today in Jesus' name, amen.